If you're active in the action figure community at almost any level, you know for a fact that Four Horsemen Cedos pretty reliable. I mean, they've done a lot in their almost 25 year run. These three sculptors from McFarland have built something pretty damn special. They've worked in the toy industry for a long time. DC, Masters of the Universe, Toy Biz, Marvel Legends, you name it. They even have their own lines, Mythic Legions, and the new Cosmic Legions, which is getting pretty good reviews. But what we have here today is not from one of their classic lines, and it's not something they just worked on. This, my friends, is the Figura Obscura Headless Horseman. Now, at a quick glance, this figure does look pretty boring. Just a lot of dark colors going on. Until you look closer at the sculpt. The tall and kind of intimidating collar on this guy, it looks like real leather. They did a really nice job on it. The inside of the collar is also very nicely detailed. It has that white for the undershirt, and probably one of my favorite colors in this whole figure, the purple ascot with a nice dark wash on it. And that is a theme with this figure. Almost everything on this figure is covered in that very nice black wash, really accentuating the sculpt. Or just really good paint jobs in general. I mean, every single stud, button, and buckle on this guy is hit with a very nice silver, and 99% of them look dead on accurate. Or how his shin armor is very, very nice metallic gunmetal gray. Like how two pouches on his belt are that nice purple color from the ascot, or how the last pouch is a maroon color. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but you might be asking, that's it? That's just what every toy company does. Well, there is a cherry on this Sunday, and it is that jack-o'-lantern head. As if the name and the color scheme weren't enough, this head sculpt just ups the creepy factor by a lot. The blackwash, the pumpkin skin, and the weird asymmetry of the eyes and the wide, cracked smile. Even the stem is great. I love the way that it just spirals up to, don't get me wrong, a very sharp point. Just take everything I said about that previous head and apply it to this one, just with a lot cooler effects. I mean, seriously, look at all that translucent plastic. All of it mixed so well together to give off a demonic appearance and rival that of Ghost Rider himself. But if you don't want his whole head to be engulfed by flame, this is removable. Just a pegport system. Piece of piss. And really, that's not even the end of it. If you want your headless horseman with less head, he comes with an alternate neck piece that is just the white collar of the undershirt and a severed neck sculpt that is very good and kind of disturbing. I mean, he looks great with it in there, but it's getting it out that's the problem for me. Thankfully, the previously mentioned flared out collar is a separate piece that you can just lift up on a rubber peg. That allows me to get my fingers down in there and just take it out. And then take the included soft goods cape, put it under the ascot and around the collar, line it up with under the ascot, and, and wow, is this cape massive. Thankfully, to help with posing the cape, the sides are wired, the bottom is wired, and surprisingly, the top is wired too. But the wire isn't even that strong of a wire, and there's just too much cape for it to hold it all up. But the big problem with me and the cape is that there's no way to securely get it down on him. I feel like the studs holding the chain in place would have made a perfect place to either peg or even magnetize into the shoulders without breaking up any of the sculpt. But at the end of the day, I still love this cape, all those are just nitpicks for me, and I love, love, love that maroon that was stitched on the inside and the black on the outside. And honestly, this is how he's going to be on my shelf, with the cape on. It's my preferred look. Something that is truly an issue for my copy at least, is the hands. I mean, I don't have an issue with the hands themselves. The paint is nice, the texture is great, they're nice and soft to put the sword and other things in the hands, but the problem comes in with the amount of hands. Rather specifically, the amount of correct hands. He has one clenched open hand, two pairs of grip hands, and one is the same as the other. 
Did I just get fucked with my copy? There is one complete pair of hands here. There are supposed to be three hands on each side. But God forbid they forget the head holding hand. What will we do without the head holding hand? So quickly moving away from that catastrophe, you guys all know me by this point. I love detail and accessories, but all of it's pretty useless without good articulation in my opinion. My question when I first saw this figure was, how does it move? The answer is, he poses like a charm. All his joints are nice and tight, but smooth also. You can get a lot of motion out of him, despite looking like he's stiffer than a NECA figure and some obstructions in front of the legs. These skirt pieces are made of a very pliable material, and that allows him to kick forward very far and even get into a sitting pose. That's right, you know where this is going. Finally, we bring the horse into this. And I will say there is some level of frustration with this figure, especially the articulation. I wish they had figured out more of a way to put articulation into the front legs than just a hinge and kind of swivel. Yeah, the swivel can add a little bit of character to the movement, but not much. I just really wish there were shoulder movement to this figure. And then you look at the back legs, and while they are still pretty limited, they have more range than the front ones. At least, they can move outwards a little bit. But in some of the joints, these legs are very tight, and it kind of scares me that one time I'm just gonna rip the leg off by accident. And a very minor nitpick I have about this figure is, I wish it came with an extra head. Now, it wouldn't change anything about the very nice stern angry looking eyebrows or the hellish deep red eyes just hiding the chompers a bit other than that the appearance of this beast is just impressive the hooves are nice dark red and the hair is all this reddish brown color with a nice wash to it and all the saddle equipment on this guy also looks good and it's made of a nice rubbery pliable plastic which makes it very easy for the headless horseman himself to sit on him and ride out to strike fear into your collections. And thankfully he fits with most 112 scale properties. So what's the final verdict on this set? I think both of them are remarkable pieces of plastic to add to your collection. The second I saw it, I knew I needed it for my collection. But now, a year later, I can't help but sit back and enjoy the shit out of this set. I truly have almost nothing but love for these figures. And even the complaints I had were mostly nitpicks besides the hands. The hands is a real problem. I have an actual problem with the hands. The hands actually make me mad. I mean, I collect Transformers. I'm pretty used to being disappointed. And this, very low on the level of disappointments. So would I recommend him? Yes. If you have the money, and you have the space, and you really like the figure, get him. Or you could just wait for the cooler looking green one to come out like I should have, but I'm a fool and I want the figure now, damn it, why can't I just wait? Kinda looks like Moff Gideon, doesn't he?